Good morning, my grandchildren and my friends from afar. Looks like it's going to be a nice uh, day out there. Uh, I'm thinking about those uh, people in that uh, wake of that storm we just had there in the, with all the flooding going on. We're going to remember them in our prayer here in a minute. Today we're going to look at uh, Ezekiel in chapter 30. And this is a very pathetic uh, uh, chapter. And it uh, answers to the situation we all find ourselves in today. Let's clip on our safety belt, shall we? Dear Lord God in heaven, please watch over us, Father, as we read through these scriptures. Help us receive, Father, that which you would have us receive. Father, we love you and we need you. And please forgive us for the times when we don't realize how much we love and need you, Father. Help us in our studies, Father, receive that which you would have us receive. And Father, we ask a special cover and a prayer for all those people that this uh, storm has uh, struck in Florida and on up into Tennessee and uh, the Carolinas. We ask that you help those people in the best way that you will, Father, that the people will open their hearts and their uh, their um, pocketbooks to send uh, some help uh, by way of church vans that uh, carry food and uh, clothing and shelter things down there to those people as it often is the case with uh, with these storms. Father, it's mostly the churches, the people that look to you, Father, that send most of the help to those people. And we ask that you touch the people's hearts, Father, that you can send help and that these people can receive it in your will, Father. We love you. We need you, Father. We believe. Amen. Boy, talking about that storm, it reminds me of uh, 2016. Uh, Katrina happened down here. And there's one thing that I always want to, to bring to mind. I saw where the, where the help came from during Katrina. People think that it's the, uh, that it's the uh, Red Cross. It's not. If you want to help with your pocketbooks, go down to the store and buy uh, some food and uh, whatever you can think of, even toys and things for those kids that are in those shelters and they're in the melee that they're in toys and and uh, uh comfort things of comfort and find you a church even if you don't go to church and then put it in one of them big 18 wheelers those churches what they do when these things happen they'll load up those 18 wheelers with all kind of goods and they'll send it that's the real help that comes to those people the red cross for as much as they do do uh, they don't do a whole lot more uh, most of that money for the Red Cross, when you give money to the Red Cross for something like that, ends up uh, within the system of the Red Cross. Whereas when you uh, send your help to these 18-wheelers that these churches uh, are putting together, and you can usually see them just about everywhere. When uh, So if you see one of them 18-wheelers, man, go buy you a, a few goods that, uh, that uh, you can send in that 18-wheeler. That help will be returned to you. I guarantee it. Dear Lord. We're going to get on with this reading, and let's, uh, let's hope for a good day for those people up there as well as us. The word of the Lord came unto me again, unto me, saying, It said, uh, Son of man, prophesy, and say thus, saith the Lord God. He's saying, You tell, uh, you tell him I said it. How, yea, woe worth the day. And this means uh, give yourself a good cry. Because some tough things are coming. Uh, kind of like this storm I was just talking about. we got tough times ahead. Because uh, the people have... Uh, God has given things to the hand of those that would uh, cause havoc and harm. Uh, because uh, why? We got it coming. Because we took our eyes and heart off of the good Lord. And uh, it's time to put our eyes and our heart back on the Lord. Praise God. Amen. For the day is near. Even the day... Of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. What does this mean? A cloudy day means it's dark. There's a storm on the horizon. You know, for, I don't know, probably 60, 70 years, while we were watching the Super Bowl and our favorite movies and <clears throat> had our eye on everything but God's Word, uh, the Lord has uh, given the world the, the uh, governings and the workings of the world over to evil men. Uh, why? Because we didn't look to God. So God's going to make sure we have a remembrance 
of why we should look to Him for our well-being. And we've been looking to man for our well-being in this whole time. Man has been doing things like fooling around with the weather, using cloud seeding and things such as that, and uh, microwave emitters, and uh, filthying up the air with uh, with uh, uh, radio waves. Everybody's got a cell phone. These old radio waves are polluted up the air, which affects our bodies. Uh, our water is becoming... Uh, almost undrinkable. Uh, our food, if you read the labels, has so many different poisons and stuff in them that uh, it's unhealthy. Why? Because we took our eyes off of the good Lord and we lost our morals. We lost our sense of fair play. And then when we started worshiping money, those food companies started doing whatever it took to make uh, money, the most money they can by putting all these uh, preservatives and things in our food. So thus our poison, I mean, our food has become poison. Our air is polluted with uh, billions of uh, radio waves, which is affecting our, the development of our bodies, and uh, so on and so forth. This is a cloudy day, and it's uh, all about to build up, catching up with us. The sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia. Uh, when the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken. Who's Egypt? This is our old carnal way of thinking. Our carnal way of thinking is who allowed us to take our eyes and hearts off of God, off of God's word, the understanding to the heart, to the spirit. And we just wanted to understand it with our brains. And we just told ourselves that this old Bible had a lot of pages that didn't make much sense. This is what our carnal wants us to believe. Why? Because we weren't looking for the spiritual implications and the spiritual significances of what this Bible was telling us. So now the world is in a, in great, uh, a great amount of trouble. And uh, take away our multitudes from our foundations shall be broken down. Our foundation is the Word of God. It's broken down how? The Word is still there, but we can't understand it anymore because all we can read it is in the carnal these days. But uh, you look, hang on there. Help's on the way. Help's coming. Ethiopia and Libya and uh, Lydia and all the mingled people and Chub and the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. This is a mixed vat of people here. And uh, this has two meanings here. We're going to fall by the sword in the carnal sense. Why? Because this world is a place of manifestation. And this world will manifest the spiritual uh, condition of whatever that condition is we're in. If we take our eyes off God and if we are in a bad way, then so too this physical world will manifest that. So this sword is uh, in the physical sense means wars and chaos and the overturning of governments, and people starving with famine. But on the spiritual sense, this is a good thing. Because in the spirit, to fall by this sword of the word of God is to receive that revelation of Jesus Christ. And this is when we start to receive this word with our hearts, not just our brains. And this is where we become saved, my friend. Don't worry about your old flesh bodies. Uh, they were never meant to have longevity. These old flesh bodies were just a momentary thing that we may have salvation, not only from this life, but from the life before. Praise God. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. From the tower of Zion shall they fall in it by the sword. Uh, the tower is a high place, and I'm not sure what Zion was, but I'm sure they had a pretty high tower there. Otherwise, I wouldn't have used it for a, a likeness here. But uh, this is the high place, these towers. And we're going to fall by this sword. And our carnal understanding and our carnal way of life is a pretty high tower. Uh, look at what all we can achieve in the carnal. But this sword is going to take us down a notch. And the Lord is saying this. This sword is going to be our... Uh, this is going to be a good thing in the spirit, not so good in the carnal. And they shall be uh, desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate. And her cities shall be 
in the midst of the cities that are wasted. Uh, this is all around us. This, this is going to be a global thing in the carnal. Uh, when the food uh, chain breaks down and the chaos ensues, even as we see it ensue today with the with all these uh, borders being open and all these uh, uh, people that are sent, everybody's dumping off their problems on somebody else. And don't think they're all coming to the United States because even the United States is, is dumping off their problems on down to Mexico and Canada. Everybody is moving. Everybody is scrambling. Everybody's trying to find a, a refuge and an illusion that they think it's better somewhere else. Well, it's not. Because this is a spiritual problem that we're suffering from. And wherever you go, that spiritual problem is there because we can't leave without taking ourselves with us, can we? So we need to fix ourselves from within. We need to fix ourselves with this word of God. And uh, they shall be desolate in the midst of the counties. I see I already read that. Uh, eight reads. And uh, they shall know that I am the Lord. When I have set a fire in Egypt. Now, when we see this, I'm always reminded that God is an all-consuming fire. God talks all the time in this Bible about purifying us, about furnaces and things like that, and, and the melting down of gold uh, to getting that old dross to rise to the top where he can get rid of that dross. That old dross is our carnal way of thinking. It's our human imperfectness. And God is heating us up, and he's a consuming fire. As long as we read this consuming fire, we will be consumed in spirit. And this is a good thing. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Let's see. God went off. And they shall know. Let me see uh, where I'm, I just read at. I know I just read about a consuming fire. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And I have, I have set a fire in Egypt. And when all her helpers shall be destroyed. This is all things being burned, burned away. Into uh, all the impurities burned away. This is a good thing. In that day, shall, mes shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the uh, careless Ethiopians afraid, and shall in a, and great pain shall come upon them, as in the day of Egypt, for lo, it cometh. Uh, these are messengers that are coming in God in a ship. Uh, this ship, as we was reading a chapter back, though, those uh, ships were, were talked about in a couple of chapters before this one. What is a ship? It's something that takes you places. A ship can be a church. A ship can be a, a movement of revelation. A, a ship can be a movement of uh, uh, revival. A, a ship can be a, a movement of compassion. I was talking a while ago about letting the Lord touch your heart, about sending these people some help by loading up these 18-wheelers with soaps and foods and things that they need. They lost everything. Uh, this can be a ship. When you start a movement like that, it can become a ship. So you got people talking from these ships, and this ship, and this particular ship is a ship of, uh, of revelation. Because what we try to do uh, here in this, uh, these readings is try to uh, is remind ourselves that there is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And when we get in tune to that, boy, don't our lives become better. Uh, and, and make the uh, careless Ethiopians afraid. There's many of us are these careless Ethiopians. Remember, we play all sides of this, uh, of this coin. We play, uh, we're, we're everybody in this book mentions. Never think that you're the other guy because we are the other guy on the other side at all different times. Uh, one day you're the guy with the whip in your hand uh, beating Jesus and put driving nails through his hand. And the next day you're playing the part of the Jesus with the people driving nails in your hands and tying you up to a cross. Uh, this is uh, we play all parts. Uh, the uh, what's the guy that was in charge of Jesus, the Roman guy, uh, Pontius Pilate. Uh, one day you're you're Pontius Pilate because somebody might be trying to drop a word on you. That is a spiritual thing because you don't understand it. You might be standing there asking truth. Huh? What is truth? Uh, you might be the uh, the Jews that were in high place that couldn't see Jesus for who he was, the spirit of the Lord. And you might uh, want to have him put to death. Uh, you never know who you're going to be. Uh, but I, I got a feeling that through our education that we're going to be all the parts in this Bible in spirit one way or another. 
Uh, let's see. The great pain shall come upon them, and is in the, at the day of Egypt. For lo, uh, it cometh. This troublesome time, it's coming, not only to the flesh, but it's coming to the spirit. So make yourselves ready as you can by reading this word of God. A little every day can really make a big difference with us. Praise God. Amen. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also make a multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. God is going to take one uh, carnal guy and use him to help out another carnal guy. And when I say help out, it means destroy, because in this state that he's there becoming destroyed, what do you do when you're destroyed? What do you do when you can't go no further? What do you do when you've had it, and you've been soundly whipped on the battlefield, this mental and spiritual battlefield? You look up to the Lord God for help. This is where God is bringing us. He wants us to look up to him for help, and help will come. Help's on the way. He and his people with him, the terrible of the nations, um, shall be brought to destroy the land. And this is where we're witnessing today. Our land is being destroyed, is it not? And they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. Now in the carnal, this is a rough picture, but in the spirit uh, to fill the land with the slain. This slain is our carnal states, our carnal beings, our carnal bodies. They, our carnal understanding, it needs to be slain that our spirits can live. And I will make the river dry. This talked about that old river, uh, the, the Nile, uh, the, the Nile River up there in uh, Egypt. This uh, river is uh, going to be dried. This, this, this is the thing that fed our carnal way of thinking. This is the thing, the thing that fed Egypt, and uh, this is where its commerce came from. This is where its uh, money was uh, enabled. This is where its towers were built from, everything that came down this river. It's going to dry up. Our old carnal way of seeing things is going to dry up and sell the land unto the hand of the wicked, and I will make the land waste, and, uh, and all that is therein by the hand of strangers. This is where we are today. We, Our lands is in the hand of strangers. This is why your borders are open. This is why that uh, people can claim that there's a deadly bug or virus on the way, and they can say you can't go to church anymore. But you can go to the bar rooms, and they can say uh, you can't go into the stores anymore and buy goods, but you can pick it up out there in the parking lot. And uh, this is a, we're in the hand of these strangers. And I, the Lord, have spoken it. So there's no sense in trying to go against this and fight this in the world. We need to fight this in ourselves. Uh, the only way to turn this around is for each and every one of us to become a better spiritual person. Uh, when I, then we're talking about that, the land is in the hand of the wicked, the note I made. Uh, our food is poison. Our air is poison. This is what I was talking about with the radio waves. Our water is poison. It's getting to where they got to purge out the water through the fire hydrants every time you turn around because there's so much poison and they put poison in there with that uh, that's, uh, fluoride. They do think it's just fluoride, but they put all kind of stuff in the water. Uh, all these things are a likeness to things in the spirit. Uh, our food in the spirit is what? what? How do they poison? This is our carnal understanding of the word of God. They poison that. Our air is poison. What is air? Uh, our air is uh, what we breathe in uh, physically, but it's that breath of life. God is that ruach, that breath that breeze of air. Uh, so our understanding of God, it's become poisoned by these people, these old fake TV preachers of plastic churches that uh, pour uh, endless volumes of, uh, of uh, garbage into uh, the minds of people. Uh, our water, what is our water? Our water, sir, we don't think of Jesus sitting at the well. He said, I can give you a drink of the water that you'll never be thirsty for again. Waters is always a likeness for the many peoples. And Jesus, if when he puts his spirit in that water, he can, uh, he can save that water. He can make that water a great thing of life. Uh, wells are often spoke of, like the well of Jacob and so forth. What is a well? Your mouth is a well. What comes out of your mouth is a well that others partake of? Uh, the Lord said one time, it's not what uh, goes into the mouth that, uh, that trashes up a man, but what comes out of it. And uh, this is a... All these things have a, a, a spiritual connotation. Let me see if I can remember where I was. Um, 
I must have been pretty close to here. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols, and I will cause their images to cease out of Noth, and there shall uh, be no more a prince in the land of Egypt, and I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. Egypt, remember, is our captivity, it's our carnal state. And uh, for God to say he's going to get rid of these images and uh, all these uh, types of things, this means we're waking up. We're coming to a place. He's saying, wake up. You need to know that this word is writ also written to your heart, not just your mind. Think about it. And I will make uh, Pathros desolate and will set fire in Zoan and will execute judgment in No. Uh, no is a, uh, uh, let me see, I saw it a while ago. No means... Uh, um, no is a, a no amum, which is the name of a place over there. And I will pour my fury upon sin, uh, the strength of Egypt. Uh, this sin is spelled like sin, S-I-N, but it may be talking about a place. Let's see, sin is a palisium uh, in the Egypt uh, Delta is where this place is located. Sin is spelled, and it says here just like sin. And I will pour out my fury upon sin. You can, I could also read that. Well, why is that spelled as S-I-N? Which is how sin is spelled, right? I could look at that as he's going to pour out his fury upon our sin. This is our carnal state. And strength of Egypt. And I will cut off the multitude of no, which again is a, is a no amaman, the name of a place there. And this is also how we say the word No. I think all these things can speak to our spiritual uh, state of being in our heart if we let them. And I will set fire in Egypt. God is that consuming fire. And Egypt is our carnal state. It's burning away. Can you feel it? That, uh, that old carnal way of thinking gets burned away. And sin shall have great pain. And no shall be, a, shall be rent asunder. I can read this as no more can we going to say, no, I can't understand the spirit. I don't get it. I think this no is going to be rent asunder, and uh, this sin is going to have a great pain. It's because our spiritual state, I mean our, uh, our our carnal state, is going to catch on fire, and it's going to be burnt away into that spiritual state is going to live. Praise God, Amen. And Noah, or Noth, uh, Noth, shall have uh, distress daily, and young men of Avon, or even, uh, and of uh, Piabasith, Piabasith shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. Now, this in the spiritual sense, this is all a good thing. And Typhonus also, the day shall be darkened when I shall break there the yokes of Egypt, and the pomp of her strength shall cease in her. Uh, praise God. Amen. We need our Egypt to be broken. And for her, a cloud shall cover her. There's that cloud again. This is that storm. This is that old gloomy, doom, uh, doom and gloom uh, cloud. It needs to cover her. And her daughters shall go into captivity. Uh, why? Because we're, we're leaving this fold. Uh, but uh, the ones that come after us, uh, they got to go through the same process. Thus will I execute judgment in Egypt, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, there's those ones again, in the seventh day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed, to put a roller, to bind it, to make it strong, to hold the sword. And if we think about this in modern day language, he said, I, I done broke this uh, king's arm and uh, I'm not going to allow somebody to put a cast on it to make it strong enough to hold the sword. What sword are we talking about? This sword is the word of God. In uh, Egypt, in our old carnal way of thinking, I always talk about these plastic uh, churches today uh, preaching the, uh, the plastic understanding, which is the carnal understanding. He's going to take that sword out of that hand because they teach and preach and teach and preach, and you don't really get much value from the Spirit, do you? 
many people have been going to these stores. I mean, going to these, uh, well, probably Riley Call store, but it's churches. And they've been receiving teachings all their life. And guess what? They're still depressed. They're still frightened. They're still in, in disarray because that sword in his hand is weakened. God has broken it. Why? Because they chose the carnal way. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. This is that Egypt is that old carnal understanding and the king of that carnal understanding would be teachers and preachers and the prophets of carnal understanding. I will break his arm, the strong, and that which was broken. He's breaking the other arm now. And I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. The carnal reigns that uh, the world has on the world, uh, the world teachers has on the world's people today is going to fall out of his hand. Why? Because there's a great revival coming. There is a great awakening coming to where people understand this word of God in the spirit and they can let go of that old sword that's been crippled by the Lord uh, through this old uh, uh, carnal state that we understand in. And then we can start to understand it in the spiritual. Praise God for that. Amen. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and I will disperse them through the countries. This has always been the case for people that reach uh, for the Lord. We're all scattered all over the world. Nobody can say that uh, their country is a Christian nation today. You can't say that the United States is a Christian nation. But why? Because uh, we're all scattered everywhere. And the people that were scattered from all the other nations went to all the other nations. We're all scattered. But there's a remnant. And they're speckled out through all this chaos and all this um, all this out of controlness that we see and taking place on the world. We're there. We're just not all bunched up in the same place. Well, thank God for the Internet because uh, we can uh, we can read what we want to and understand what we want to from the Internet. This uh, Internet can be a good thing just as much as it is a bad thing. Any tool, like any tool, it is used for what the, uh, the one who holds that tool is seeking. So in that sense, for all the harm the Internet has done, uh, we can use this Internet to we can get, come together and uh, praise God in the way that we want to with whoever we want to. Praise God for that. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and I will disperse them throughout the countries. And I will strengthen the arm of the king of Babylon. Get this now. And I will put my sword in his hand. What does this mean? You mean people that used to have the carnal understanding like old king of Babylon? Uh, the, the good Lord is going to now strengthen this sword in his hand? That's right. The old people that was thinking in the carnal for all their lives is going to start to gain spiritual understanding, and that sword is going to be strengthened in uh, Nebuchadnezzar's hand. And I will break Pharaoh's arm, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. These old plastic churches are going to fall. And then the, the new churches are going to take place. These are people that are playing the part. Remember I told you a couple of chapters ago that in some weird way, Nebuchadnezzar is a likeness for Christ. This is a likeness for people waking up to the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ and doing the will of the Lord God. Praise God. Amen. I told you, we play all sides of these coins. None of us is better than the other guy. We play all sides. Praise God. Before him, the groanings of a deadly wounded man. That old way of thinking, that carnal man, he's going to be groaning. And why? He's had it. Once you go uh, to the spirit of the Lord and receive that revelation of Jesus Christ, you don't go back to that carnal understanding unless you're a fool. I always like to use this likeness. It's kind of like cutting grass with a ZTR versus an old timey lawnmower. Man, once you cut grass with a ZTR lawnmower, you ain't going back to that old four-wheel drive uh, tractor uh, way of driving a lawnmower. That ZTR is so much more faster. It makes such a better cut. I used to cut grass with those old mowers. It would take me two days to cut all the grass I had to cut. The day I got a ZTR mower, I cut it in four hours. And this, uh, this is the difference between Jesus 1.0 and Jesus 2.0. Jesus 1.0 is understanding Jesus in the carnal mind, the carnal way we understand Jesus. But understanding Jesus in the spirit, that's Jesus 2.0. This is when this book opens up. This is when these seals this book talks about becomes unlocked. Remember there were, I think, seven seals, like these little tabs would be a leather strap. 
that you could strap up a book and seal it. Um, in the spiritual sense, the book is sealed because we see things in the, in the carnal. But when we start to read things in the spirit and understand that in the spirit, those old latches, they become unlocked and we can now have access to this beautiful, precious word of God. Amen. And I will strengthen the arm of the king of Babylon and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon. Praise God. Amen. And he shall stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. Like he's taking the sword. He's just stretching this thing out over the land. It's like it's wake up time. We're all seeing that sword waving. Can we see it? It's time to wake up. It's time to get into the spirit. And I will scatter the uh, Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among the countries. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Man, what a powerful chapter that is. And that powerful, I tell you what, that chapter is about revelation. It's about a time of waking up. There is a dark cloud upon the horizon. Every time you turn on that TV, you see that dark cloud. Uh, you know it's coming. I see we just did 30. I'm going to skim over these notes. If anybody has a notion, they can read the notes of old. Hit the pause button when the camera gets still. And you can read uh, the notes of Matthew Henry. Uh, they didn't, he didn't have much to say about the about uh, what uh, I thought was important in that chapter. But Matthew Henry lived two to three hundred years ago. And so a lot of the things that he uh, studied on and helped us have a clarity and understanding uh, just didn't come to him because of the time he lived in. This is one book for all times, for all uh, generations, for all people. One book for all people, I like to say. Grandchildren, I hope you guys are reading and studying along. And if you aren't, and if you're thinking about it, I hope that you let the good Lord touch your heart and give you, uh, give you the desire to start uh, wrestling that angel. Old Jacob, I like to always bring this story up. I never know what video you may stumble across, so I like to bring this up in a lot of them. Old Jacob was wrestling this angel one night that showed up. He wrestled that angel all night long. And uh, that old angel said, finally, after it was about to get daylight, he said, hey, let me go. The, the light's about to come. And Jacob says a curious thing. He says, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. Talking to that angel. Now, the word angel is often translated in the Bible as messenger. Anybody can be an angel an angel in that sense at any given time. Uh, if anybody shares a word of the Lord, a word of God, something that helps somebody get onto a better way of thinking, a better way of, uh, of praising the Lord God, anybody can be an angel in that sense. So what that story means is, this is your angel. What, what better messenger is there than the Holy Word of God? Look at this beautiful mountain. Every word you read is a hike up this mountain. Every word you read is a step. that gets you high, higher and higher up the mountain. Zion, this is where we meet God to learn what His desire for us is, where we get our instruction. And uh, as we wrestle this messenger, why do we wrestle it? Because we don't understand what this thing is talking about. Because our brain is busy trying to work on it, trying to understand. But it says it talks in this old English language. We don't know uh, what that means. And we, it says these weird, mysterious things that we don't know what it's saying. This is how we wrestle. We wrestle with this thing trying to make heads and tails of it. And we do this sometimes all of our lives until one day that light comes. And that book says, hey, let me go. This, uh, this uh, light's about to come. And then we say, I ain't letting you go, messenger, angel, until you bless me. What do you want to be blessed with? With understanding. This is that spiritual understanding. This is that revelation of Jesus Christ that comes in our hearts to where all of a sudden we understand that everything we've been reading all them years ago in a carnal confusion all has a spiritual significance that talks to our hearts. And that awakens something inside of us. And that is where we get to heaven. That is where we start to live within the word of God. God said one time that the, uh, he said, the heavens and the earth will pass away. But then he says, my word will never pass away. So if you've suffered things, like if you've lost people you've loved and it's made you bitter, if it's made you jaded, if you've suffered things of a, uh, 
of addictions, if you've had a rough life, and I'm praying to God that you don't, but let's say uh, you may have a rough life. Uh, it, the answer for that is all here. The salve for your eyes is here. The balm for your wounds in life is all right here within these precious words. Don't let go of that messenger. Stay with it, even though you may not be understanding, even though it may be painful. Most wrestling matches are. You stay with that word of God, and God will give you what you seek, and that's understanding in the heart and the spirit. This is love. This is what we're all after. Grandchildren, I love you. And also my grandchildren that are happen to stumble along that I may have never met, but like to study along in this, uh, this book. I know a lot of young people today are are starting to seek because they're left flat with what many churches teach and preach today. They never really get around to just reading the Word of God and let it permeate and take its place in our hearts. So uh, a lot of young people, as well as my old friends out there that uh, got a little snow on the top, uh, I like reading these uh, stories to you because you never know what may be said and helps it something click for somebody else. God knows that in many of your comments that you read, I get things that uh, click, spiritual help comes my way through the comments. And when people give me scriptures to check out, I check them out. And uh, uh, a lot of things click for me. And I know it can be that way for all of us. This is what the, uh, the good Lord meant by edifying. Let's edify one to another and be a help to one another. Uh, try to figure out what this all means in the spirit. I love you. I hope you have a great day. Uh, don't forget to say some prayers today. It's a bad place. I've been there before with a, a horrific flood. These people are going through. Uh, over there with that uh, storm it hit. And there's another storm coming. Uh, God help us all with that one. And uh, these uh, people that uh, the Lord just let us know, he let, he let them have power. He sold the land out to wickedness. These people fool around with the weather. They fool around with the radio air, ether waves. They fool around with our food, our, pot, our water. Uh, they fool around with all kinds of things. It's true. Now, there is climate change, but uh, it's also true. I know where it came from. It came from us taking our eyes off of God and letting that wicked hand take, uh, take charge over us. If, when we start looking back to God, our lives will start getting better. Enough said. The old man's getting along with it. I love you. I hope you have a great day. And come on back and uh, study with us again sometime, won't you? Praise God for the day. Not everybody is guaranteed another day. Thank the good Lord. The first thing you do when you wake up in the morning is praise God for the day. It's going to be a good one. Why? Because we started it out with a little bit of scripture. Every day, no matter what your troubles are in it, it's a great day as long as we started out with a little bit of scripture and some spiritual growth. Praise God for the day. Amen.